Welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs for General Disturbance. This is a Carnarvon Action 10. It's a tier 8 British Premium Heavy, and alongside it is a 7032. Now, the Carnarvon's being driven by Arpenheimer, and the Carnarvon, uh, the 7032, being driven by Twisted Rapture. Game's on. Well, this is the only replay we've had from Oppenheimer in a while, mainly because he's been very, very busy and he just didn't have any time to play the game at all. So, uh, if we do get a replay, we're lucky. And, of course, we have been getting a few replays from uh, Filipperino, as you saw recently. A few of those have been done. Now, the Carnarvon Action 10 has got a 20-pounder. Fairly good TPM, but it's got awful alpha damage on these shells. As you can probably see if you just look, it's 230 alpha. Nowhere near as much as you get from a 122. But then you have got AFK Muppets over there. Nice shot. Takes down the Scorpion. That AFK is still there. Well, we'll just keep farming him whilst he's there. Just watch out for that... Centurion. The Centurion is the tank that actually did get built because the Carnarvon Action 10 was the FB200. FB2, is it FB2000? FB200, I think it was, yes. And they built the Centurion instead of this one. Yeah, that guy's gonna finally get into the game and suddenly realise he's missing most of his hit points. If you're hearing a weird clicking noise every now and then, we think it's something down to uh, Wargaming's recent update. Because I actually installed a fresh version of the game into my uh, onto my uh, PC. In fact, in two different places, and uh, it came up with this clicking noise every time you fired the gun. Now, I thought originally it was something to do with the Klaus mod, because that caused the clicking noise as well. But no, I actually think it's down to Wargaming, because you can hear it every time he fires, you get a click. There you go. Something very odd. I'm sure Wargaming will have a reasonable explanation. It even occurs during the game as well. Nice shot into the engine bay. He bounced around that came from the standard B to his left. He's now looking at that Cunard Centurion. Took a round into the track again from that standard B. Obviously, he wants to get the Centurion because it's a higher tier. But the standard B, well, the standard B is a, a, a higher tier as well. But he's more of a problem because he's got the auto reloader. Well, the enemy's capping. It is an encounter game, not a standard game. And he's moved down to engage the Centurion. Here comes Twisted Rapture. Oh, he was Amorax. In fact, he's still Amorax. Nice one into the engine bay. And the kill goes to the Oni. Just derps him. Okay, T29 next. Nice. Yeah, it's often odd that when the reticule actually rests on the wall rather than on the target. But it's obvious that the wall is actually between him and the target. And, well, he and Twist and Rapture are both going together. In fact, um, there's only five enemy tanks left. And that Progetto's the other side of that uh, rise. So he can't get a shot on that guy just yet. That Twisted Rapture went into the cap area, but he's uh, come back out again. Oh, now they've got some targets. Tiger, Tiger 1 should make an easy target. It's only tier 7. Go for it. Oh, he just took a massive hit. I think that was Twisted Rapture. Oh, he's been spotted now, so yeah, rounds might be incoming. And no, they're not. <laughs> the enemy has been blown away. Now, they've got an ST1 just the other side. Is he going to go down the cliff here? A bit dangerous, but... 
one way of fixing it. And he rams the standard B. Oh, yes. Oh, no. <laughs> that was good ending. I didn't expect Arpenheim to get wiped out right at the end, but uh, yeah, it was unfortunate that. Never, never mind. The ST1 just had too much time to kill him after he rammed the standard B. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. This is a single battle game. And that's the wrong screen. <laughs> just shows to show you I had File Explorer open. Okay, it was an ace tanker in this game. He also managed to get a spotter badge for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage, a fire for effect, and a bruiser. He also picked up the high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game and a confederate for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. And a win eight of that one was 12,678, which is super unicum and quite a bit more. Let's have a look at the uh, team score. Well, we can see he actually did get the highest damage by a nice little margin, 5,061 hit points of damage. The next high scorer was, in fact, his platoon mate in the 7032, Twisted Rapture. He got 3,395. The next high scorer after that was the CS-59 on their team, 2296. When it came to kills, it was shared between Oppenheimer, Twisted Rapture, and just those are the two, that, sorry, they were the two who actually shared three kills apiece. Um, but no, uh, oh, of course they weren't in platoon. In fact, actually it wasn't Twisted Rapture. What am I saying? It was the ST1 on his team who got the kill, uh, three kills, and he got a steel wall. Twisted Rapture got two kills. That's right now. That's why they didn't get the Brothers in Arms. And when it came to base XP, though, we can see that it was Oppenheimer and Twisted Rapture between them. They got the highest. In fact, they were the only ones who got over 1,000. 1,835 for Oppenheimer, 1,260 for Twisted Rapture. Oppenheimer fired 26 rounds, got 22 direct hits, 20 penetration, and 1 splash. Damage of 5,061 hit points, of which 440 were at more than 300 meters. He received 9 hits from the enemy in that game, 4 penetrations, 5 non-penetrations, and 1,335 hit points of damage blocked by armor, which is surprising considering the Carnarvon doesn't really have very good armor on the hull. The turret's okay because it's an action 10 turret, but the hull, yeah, it's fairly weak. Uh, he damaged 10 of the enemy, killed 3, and did 3,005 hit points of spotting assist. He earned 169,385 from the game, got 84,692 from personal reserves, bringing up a total of over a quarter of a million. Look at that, 254,077 uh, credits. And after repair, ammunition and consumables, took away a profit of 187,633 credits. And he didn't fire that much in the way of premium ammo, as you can see here, but he did fire some. He earned 2,752 XP, times 2 for the first victory, 6,506 for completing the mission, 275 for being a premium vehicle and took away 12,286 experience points altogether. That was a big earner on the experience. So a very nice little battle from Arpenheimer. Thanks for sending it in. I know he's been waiting a while for this one to pop up. It was sent in on the 4th of November. I know some of you have been waiting for nearly two years to get replay. Some of my some of my own replays have been waiting that long. I, I just looked through the list the other day to check and see. And yet I found replays that I put in the list myself two years ago. And I still haven't got around to doing them. And I think the reason for that is every time Wargaming brings out a new client, it takes me a while to get through uh, the old ones. And in fact, actually, I start end up doing the new ones in preference to the old ones because obviously I can run the new ones on the existing client in the, the slot just by clicking on the uh, replay link and it will start straight away. Uh, whereas if I have to take an old file, I have to put it into the uh, uh, the other server to actually make it work. But anyway, that's my problems. Um, I hope you all had a good Black Friday. You can see it was a Black Friday um, uh, from the advert down there below. And I hope you uh, didn't spend too much money, but uh, managed to get some bargains. I know some of you probably didn't really want to go out shopping, seeing as uh, 
the pandemic and all that, but uh, some of us are not able to get out because if we do, we get fined by the police for doing so, which is rather annoying. But anyway, that's politics, and I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, I'm just going to say I hope you're all enjoying your uh, well-deserved uh, reward and spending a lot of time on the servers. I've absolutely been engorging myself on masses and masses of games uh, because I've got uh, seven days premium on one of the accounts that I don't normally play on and so I've been building up as many credits as I can and also spending it on consumables so that I can uh, run that account sometime in the future. But anyway, I've got some my own replays coming up very shortly so stick around and you'll see those coming up. Thanks for watching.